What's up, crafting fam? And welcome back to Victoria's Creations. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Vicki, and I will be your crafting hostess for today. Today's project is an oldie, but a goodie. Since sublimation has come out, people don't seem to use iron-on quite as much anymore. I, however, still enjoy creating beautiful things with it, such as this beautiful unicorn shirt that I made for one of my granddaughters. If you're interested in learning how to create a shirt using more than one color of iron-on, join me at my crafting table. Working with iron-on or HTV is not as tricky as you would think, as long as you remember a few simple tips. The first thing you need to know is the type of iron-on you are using. This matters because there are some iron-ons that you cannot layer anything on top of. Glitter, foil, and holograph, to name a few. Your everyday iron-on is not one of those things. You can put any iron-on vinyl on top of your everyday iron-on. That's why it's important to make Make your specialty iron on your glitter your foil your holographic the last layer to use it should always be on top when applying your vinyl to your mats you need to make sure that the shiny side is down this is your carrier sheet this protects your vinyl from the heat along with Teflon paper or butcher paper so your dull side is what's going to face up for today's project, you're going to need your cutting machine. I'm using my Cricut Explore Air 2, your vinyl, your Cricut weeding tool, your brayer tool, your Cricut Light Bright to help with seeing where your little cuts are, your standard grip mats, Teflon paper, or you can use butcher paper, your heat press. I'm using my clam heat press. You can use your Cricut Easy Press. If you're using your Cricut Easy Press, you will also need your Cricut Easy Press mats. Your shirts, I'm using 100% cotton, and of course your design. If you're ready, I'll show you where to get our dinosaur design, along with this unicorn design, and we'll get started. Step one, get my t-shirt design SVG file. To get the design, go to Victoria's Creations Vault. Enter the password to access the vault. The password can be found in each email I send out. Look for design number 011 T-Shirt Design SVG. Click on it and download it to your computer. Step 2. Prep your T-Shirt Design SVG file. The first thing you need to do is upload your design to Cricut Design Space. Click Upload. Look for your files. Select the design you want to make. For this project, we are going to do our dinosaur design. Upload and add your design to your canvas. Everything will be grouped together when you first get into Canvas. To see your whole design, zoom out by clicking the minus button at the bottom left hand side. Click ungroup and when you click on some of the words you'll notice that the letters are not all connected. So you'll want to make sure you, you select the letters of all the words for each section by taking your mouse and dragging over the words that you want to select or you can come to the right hand side and select each layer by holding down the shift key. Attach each layer so that when they cut they will cut out as words and not as individual layers. In order to complete this step for the words sister and four you're going to have to go to the right hand side and select the letters from here. Select the first letter and then hold the shift key down and select each letter after. Attach them. Repeat the same process for the word dinosaur. Click templates at the top left hand corner, locate classic t-shirts. 
Once you select the template, you will have the opportunity to choose the type of shirt. We will choose kids short sleeve and the size of the shirt. Our shirt is small, so we'll make sure it stays on small. Select your design by dragging your mouse over the entire design or again by selecting everything on the right hand side in your layers column. Resize your image based on the area of the t-shirt you would like to put your vinyl. Once you have it exactly where you want it, you can always double check the measurements by taking your ruler and measuring out the actual t-shirt. Make sure your design is not bigger than the actual t-shirt. Once you have your design sized correctly, it is time to select the colors for your design. Make sure your colors are not the same as your shirt. If you remember when you saw the unicorn shirt at the beginning of this video, the unicorn and the ribbon were almost identical to the shirt, making it just a little hard to see. Now remember, your Cricut machine doesn't know what colors you are actually putting on your mat, so this is more for your benefit. You can choose to use one color, two colors, or three colors. Really, you can use a different color for every single word and image on the mat in the design. On a side note, when you are creating the sparkle like a unicorn design, you will want to make sure that you slice the ribbon with the words like A and the unicorn with the image of the unicorn. Unicorn. So you're cutting the words out of the ribbon and out of the unicorn and not cutting those words to place on top of them. Unless, of course, you would like to have those words cut out in a different color or in white and pressed on top of the ribbon and the unicorn. <laughs> Another reason for creating or changing the colors is so that you can have each color or each item where you want it. Before you move on, click the Save button. Give your project a title and then click Save again. I always try to save my projects before I click Make it, so if anything goes wrong, my project is saved. Step three, cut your iron-on vinyl. Now that you have your project saved, click Make It. Make sure your items are as they should be on each mat. You should be able to place them where they need to be once they are cut out. Toggle the mirror to the on position on all mats. This is a very important step because you're using Word. If you're only using images, it's not as important, but it is still important. Click Continue. Make sure the correct machine is selected and select the material you are using. For the first mat, I am selecting Foil Iron-On because it's not in my bookmark section. I'm going to look for it in the materials. Go to the iron on section and look for foil iron on. I want to bookmark mine because I do use it. Click done. I like to make sure that my default is selected to more for a better cut. Because my mats will be using different types of iron on, I will not select the remember material setting because each one will be, each one won't be different because Mat 1 and Mat 2 will be both be foil, but Mat 3 is everyday iron-on, and so I want it to be different than the foil. This just means that I will have to select the material for each new mat. If you are using the same type of iron-on or the same type of material for all of your mats, you can select the Remember Materials setting, and all you will have to do is continuously change out the mats when it is time. Make sure you have your fine point blade in clamp B and make sure that the blade is free of all debris. Place your vinyl on your mat, shiny side down.
line it up with the grid. You can use a brayer to smooth out your vinyl, making sure you don't have any air bubbles and making sure your mat has a good grip on your vinyl. Repeat the same process on all three mats. Load your first mat. Press the flashing up and down arrows. And then press the flashing Cricut C. When it is done, click the flashing up and down arrow to release the mat and place in your second mat. Repeat the process for all three mats. Step four, weed your iron-on vinyl. To weed your vinyl, you need to first remove it from the mat by turning your mat upside down and slowly curling the mat away from the vinyl, keeping your vinyl as flat as you can possibly keep it. Make sure you place the protective film back over your mats. Before storing them so they don't get messed up. This also extends the life of your mats. I like to use my brayer tool to go back over them so that I know the protective film is adhered to the mat. Repeat this process for the last mat. If you have difficulty with seeing the lines of what you should be weeding out, the shiny side should still be facing down. You can use your Cricut Light Bright to help you. This helps you to be able to see exactly where you need to weed. Use your Cricut weeding tool to weed out. I like to start with anything that's on the inside that needs to come out. When doing the dinosaur letters, if you need to, definitely, definitely look back at the image. Make sure you're being very careful when weeding out. While iron-on is very easy to weed, it is also very easy to, to rip. So you want to be extremely, extremely careful. Now 
Make sure as you're weeding that you're not pulling up any of the vinyl that needs to stay. Sometimes it's easy to also cut out the vinyl that you don't need. Remember to be very careful of these smaller pieces. Bigger pieces do tend to be a lot easier to weed out. At this point, we can turn the brightness, the light right off. You can see what I mean about how easy it is to tear because that is ripping right off. So you have to go very slowly over the images so that you don't cut the images themselves. Repeat the same process for all three mats. Record. Once I have everything weeded out, I like to kind of take a look to make sure everything looks right. And it looks good. Now it's time to put it on our shirt. Step five, apply your design to your t-shirt. Turn your heat press on. I like to follow Cricut's heat press guide to know what to set my heat press to. Okay. Go to Cricut.com heat guide and select the heat press you're using. I'm using my t-shirt or clam heat press, but I'm going to choose Cricut's auto heat press. Select the material. I'm using everyday iron on and I'm also using the foil iron on. My base material is cotton and you have to select the Cricut press pressing mat because it will not let you go on without doing so. According to Cricut's heat press guide, I need Need to preheat my shirt for five seconds. My temperature needs to be at 290 for 40 seconds. Because I am doing layers, I will press the first two layers at 20 seconds and the last layer I will press at 40 seconds. If you're using your Cricut heat press, place your t-shirt on your mat or a folded towel to protect your work surface. If you have a lint roller, run it across your t-shirt where you plan to adhere your vinyl to remove any dust, pet hair, or dirt that may be present. I do not have one, so I will use my hand to remove as much as I can to the best of my ability. Fold your shirt in half, letting your sleeves match up. to find the vertical center of your shirt. Use your iron or your press and put a little crease
be careful not to touch the top part, top plate of your heat press. It tends to be a little hot. You're going to press for five seconds. This helps to not only put the crease in your shirt, but to also get the moisture out of your shirt because remember, you have to preheat. Now, when you open up your shirt, you know exactly where the center is because of the center mark. Take your first layer and fold it in half, non-sticky sides together, and mark where the fold is. This will not mess up your transfer or your iron, but it gives you that center mark. Now, because we are doing different layers that are not centered with each other, before I say this is exactly where this piece needs to go, I'm going to take the biggest piece and place it to make sure that that would work and that looks good. Remove that piece because you don't want to iron it with it. Move your shirt up woo, so that your collar, I really need an iron that an iron on press, a clam press that can slide out. That's my next purchase. <laughs> Make sure when you lay your design down that the shiny side is still up and the sticky side is facing down. Because remember, this is this is protecting your shirt and this is not what's going to stick. The shiny side, this is not, if you run your fingers across it, you, you can't peel that off. Do not run your fingers across on the sticky side because that will mess up your design. Now it's time to apply the iron on to the shirt, but we are not going to follow the heat press guide for the temperature or length of time when doing a layered iron on project. This is because we are pressing layers and we need to press the bottom layers for less time to avoid overheating our design when we add more layers. We are going to drop our temperature by 15. I dropped it by 10. I'm going to drop it by another 5. So instead of pressing at 290, we are pressing at 275. And I am going to press the bottom two layers at 20 seconds a piece. Place your Teflon sheet or your butcher paper on top of your image and press. Remove your Teflon paper. Be very careful as it is hot. Let it cool off for just a moment. You want it to be a warm peel, but not a hot peel because that will burn. It will be hot. When you do start to peel, be very careful. And if you see that your design is not sticking, then you set it for a few more seconds. So while some of it is sticking, some of it is not. We're gonna go for another 10 seconds. I'm also going to turn my shirt sideways so that I can actually get the collar off of the press without burning myself because we all know that's gonna happen. Now, I'm going to press that again, see if we can't get that E to stick. There we go, ha ha, we did it. Now, next layer. We are going to add our dinosaur. Remember when you're pressing layers to make sure Y'all see me try not to get burnt. Make sure the entire image is covered with your Teflon because you don't want to mess the image up. 20 more seconds. I'm 
I lift. And warm. But that is on there good. Now, last one, we're gonna add sister. What oh, a little one. Want to make sure you put it just right. And remember again, make sure that your entire design is covered and now we're time changing our time from 20 seconds to back to 40 seconds and we're pressing for the full 40 seconds remove your teflon sheet and remove the last piece And voila. And that did not take long for that to cool off. And you can run your fingers across it to see that nothing is popping up. Even the E and the D are good. And here is a close up. Of the designs. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it is raining here. Good old sunshine, Florida. Layering vinyl does take time and patience, but in the end, the results are definitely worth it. I really love how our shirts turned out. I think they're really cute. But most importantly, I know the grandbabies are going to love them. Now that you know all of my tips and tricks on how to use multiple layers and colors with iron-on vinyl, I hope you will feel confident enough to create your own t-shirt. Once you feel confident with this layering technique, you will be able to apply it to create all sorts of different projects such as totes or other articles of clothing. Remember, if you have any questions about layering iron-on vinyl, let me know. You can leave your questions in the comments below or you can email me at hello at victoriescreations.com. I'll leave that in the description below. Please don't forget to give this tutorial a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And until next time, remember to keep crafting your best life.